Hi, I'm Bonnie Kimke. Welcome back to my studio and welcome once again to Quilting on a Thread. My last video, you saw me unpack my Cutie Breeze. And this video, you'll see me put the Cutie Breeze together. I am so excited to be one of the 100 testers and advisory members that the Grace Company has chosen to be the first to see the Cutie Breeze. This video, I'll be putting the breeze together and I'm going to show you how very, very easy it is. Now, I advise you before you start to put your breeze together and put your cutie breeze on a table that you verify with a level that your table is level. Because it's very imperative that the table be level before putting the cutie breeze on top of the table, I am checking level from various locations and in various angles. If your table, as mine is, happens to be on a carpet, let it set for at least three to four days and measure the level once again before you begin putting your breeze on the table. Now that you know that your table surface is level, it's a good idea to go ahead and gather up everything that you're going to be working on. So I have a lot of things sit here on the side, several things set at the floor beneath me, and I'm using the drawers of my table to hold the pieces until I'm going to need them. Now, the manual says you don't need anything except for the Allen wrench that's inside, but you're going to need something to rip that package open, so I have a pair of scissors. I never start assembling anything without a screwdriver, and this is a convertible screwdriver, and a small hammer, because you may just need to tap something in place. If your hammer, like mine, is a metal hammer, at least have something that will soften the blow so you don't mar the surface. So I'm going to put these things in the drawer. So it's important to note that our QD manual, the assembly and use instructions manual, will present the elements that you're going to put together in tasks. So a task is a certain portion of the assembly. And in that task, there will be certain steps. I've already read task one. And task one tells me that I need the two tracks, the two side rails, there's a left and a right side rail, and I'm going to need two threaded bumpers, and those happen to be in this kit. So I'm going to get those out right now. I want to tell you that because I've gotten one of the first deliveries, the assembly manual tells me that there's supposed to be a sticker on here that says left side. There's not. That's because I'm one of the first frame deliveries. If yours doesn't have the left side, don't worry about it. That sticker is unnecessary. All you need to know is that there's a hole here, and that hole is where the threaded rubber bumper will go. So put these up on your table, oriented left side. Now, on these rails, the right rail and the left rail, both of them will say cutie in the front on both of the uprights and on the outer side it'll say breeze. So it's cutie breeze and the arm that has no uprights on it, this goes to the rear. You'll note also that there's some pre-installed um, screws. Those bolts or screws, whatever you want to call them, those are going to go into your um, track. Now here I'm installing the threaded rubber bumpers on the front and the rear track. And as soon as I get both bumpers installed, then I'm going to move the front track forward. Um, by the way, they're identical. But I'm just going to move one forward to the approximate location, and then I'll install the side rails. Using the um, inset thumb screws that are on the side walls.
Now you only want these finger tight. And so I'll move that into place and I'll um, go ahead and attach the second one. Once that these are in place, I'm going to go ahead and use a square ruler to test for um, that the angles are square. And then I go ahead and check for level because you can get these attached to where they're not level. I've read the instructions for task two and task two tells me that the one thing I'm going to be needing in addition to what I've already built up is the bottom carriage. Essentially what task two is doing is going to verify that the track and frame are square. In addition to that, I've seen these deliver out of square. So once I put it on the frame, I'm going to be checking for square with my square ruler. It's just a safety um, step on my part. So now I put the carriage on the tracks and check for square. The whole purpose of this step, I mean this whole task, is to make sure that your track are parallel and that it's square. And you'll know this by the fact that the carriage moves very freely along the track. Um, now that you have it tight, um, square, you go ahead and tighten it up. You'll see that I found a spot not quite square, so pop it in place, tighten it back up. And we just move along, tighten up the other side, bring the carriage to make sure, and that should be done. Right, so I'm on task three, which happens to be the first task of part two. Part one was assembling the bottom of your frame. Part two is going to be assembling your upper carriage. So I've already read the instructions and the instructions tell me I need the top plate. Um, the manual says that this is emblazoned with the, with the grace emblem. Again, because I'm one of the first uh, recipients of this frame, it doesn't have the grace emblem across it. Yeah. Then I need the two handlebars. The handlebars are identical. I need the handle bracket that has the L um, car um, carousel in there for the um, bobbins. I need four um, socket bolts that are in the next package of this kit. So let me cut that open and get those out. And there are four of them. These are to attach the handlebars to the carriage plate. I'm also going to need for the <clears throat> for the handle bracket, I'm going to need the next two screws. So I'll take those out. And I'm just going to put them in the carrel. And I'm going to need the two nuts that go with those screws. Take those out and also put them in the carousel, carrel. And the other thing I need is the Allen wrench, which is down here at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and cut the Allen wrench out. And I'll just lay that here in the corner. So now I'm putting the first of the two handlebars into the bottom plate. And it's a little tricky to hold the handlebar still while getting the screw into the holes that you've made sure to align. But it can be done. And now we go on to the second.
Now that we've gotten the two handlebars on, we'll go ahead and get the handle bracket on. And the bracket is pretty easy to install, but there's a trick. You line these holes up and you get the screws in place, but the little nuts have to fit into a tiny little pocket. Be sure to pay attention to your manual and you'll see that you have to slide it into that little pocket and it helps if you get the screw in a good bit before you try to put the um, nut on. And I'm using a screwdriver to hold the nut in place while I get it started. And I'll repeat that for the other side. Now with my system, I'm using the um, Allegro, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the L carol in to hold the um, bobbins, but when I move to my Rebel, I'll swap out and put the um, M carol in. Well, I've read Task four, and task four tells me I need everything that I've put together so far. My sewing machine, which is over here on the floor, and these four clips. They look like this. They have a little blue um, bumper on them, and you all want to go ahead and open up that um, clip because what that clip does is there's a little ratchet. When it clips down, that pulls the ratchet up. When you clip is up, that lets the ratchet loose. So I'm just going to dump all four of those out. And this is essentially just getting your sewing machine situated and seated on the flat plate. Now it's a different set of steps if you're using a wheeled system. So now I'm putting the clamps in that are meant to hold the machine. And then we put the machine on. Now this is a little tricky because the machine is heavy and the bottom plate wants to move. Now I'm using an Allegro, which is a little bit wide for those clamps. If your machine is heavy enough, the clamps are not necessary, but I like them in place just to snug the machine. Well, I'm getting closer to finished. I had to lower my um, Husky table because I needed to create a comfortable position for my arms. I still need to be able to see the needle. So I can just barely see the needle. And I've got a good comfortable position with my arms. This is higher than I expected it to be as far as the um, frame sitting goes. So now we're on step I mean, task five, and I've read the documentation for task five, and what the documentation tells me is I need the two um, rail holders and, of course, the Allen wrench. So I'm ready to work on that. Now, one of the things I have to keep in mind is I have to make sure that I set the rails appropriately for this machine. This is the Allegro, and the Allegro is... 12 inches, so I have to set for 14 inches or less. The rails came to me and it looks like they are set for a 19 inch, which would have been great if I was putting my trouble on this, my um, Cunic 19, but I'm starting out with Aristotle, my Allegro, and when she gets here, I'll be putting Scarlet, my Rebel, on here. So now I'm just readjusting these from the 19 inch setting to the 12 or less setting and that's pretty straightforward, not much to do. Just loosen these and put them in the right holes. Make sure that when you look at the manual that you orient the holes um, in the manner that the, man that the manual is showing you.
So now that we've attached, I mean, we've adjusted the rail holders, we're ready to go ahead and attach the rail holders and the front rail. So that's step six. And the tools and equipment needed for step six is everything we've already been working with, the side rail holders, four pins to hold those rails in place, the front rail, and the last two screws that will hold that in place. So I just want to make sure that you understand that this is the front of your rails. Okay, so where that divot is, that's the front of your rail. The back of your rail has a solid spot because that's going to be exposed. The outside of the rails both have G signatories on the gray caps. So now we're just dropping these um, side rails onto the uprights of the sidewalls and these little black clips are just magnetic. They're really cool. And then the front rail just sits right in place and you take the screws that were provided and tighten it down. I've already read the manual, and again, the parts that we need are everything that's already been put together plus the take-up rail. Verify that you can see the top of the machine through the hole of the rear left upright, and then insert your take-up rail through that hole, bring it back into the um, right rear upright, and tighten it down. You then want to verify that there's not too much space. I used a coaster, but you just want a tad of space between the take-up rail and the bed of your machine. I did not have the carriage stop clip installed I mean, in my package. But that's not a showstopper. I have a workaround. So what I've done is used a... Um, baby lock, channel lock. Um, so what I did, and I'm just gonna show you here on the front clip, because I think you can see it. So what I did is I came up underneath this with the channel lock, and I'm moving my machine around a lot, but I came up underneath this with the channel lock. I came along that way. So now I can move but I have a channel lock. So I put it at the back over on the um, left side. But I just wanted to see you, I, I wanted to show you how I attach one. So now we're completely installed. The next thing we have to do is get our sewing machine running and working on it. But one of the things I want you to realize is that a properly installed system will move with one finger one finger. That's all that it takes to move it. And it'll move across the entire track with one finger. If it takes more than one, you know, takes more than the pressure of one finger, you have something seriously out of balance and you need to readjust and find that. So now that you've seen the whole thing put together, I hope that that helps you in your journey with your new Cutie Breeze. I can't wait to get started. Um, I want to get a quilt on this as soon as possible. So thank you for joining me here on Quilting on a Thread. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.